Hi, I'm Tim Meisberger, Director of Election Integrity at the America Project. One of the things we promote at America Project as a election reform is getting rid of voting machines and going back to a manual process. The voting machines we use currently use are non-transparent. Um, they're very hard to verify or impossible to verify, and people don't trust them. And one of the things I have always promoted throughout my career is the number one priority of an election administrator must be the conduct of an election that people have faith in. They believe it was free and fair and that the people who are elected are legitimate. So when I've raised this issue with American election administrators, many of them have said it would be impossible to do manual elections. There's too many people, um, there's too many voters, we don't really know how to do it. And that's not really true. Obviously, if you have a smaller polling station and you have enough people, you can easily do manual elections as we used to do in the past and as is done overseas today. Um, so today, what I'd like to do briefly here in the hallway and in our room is to demonstrate how a manual process works, how transparent it is, how quickly it can be done so that people have a better idea and they'll be more willing to sort of push for this kind of essential election reform. So the first thing we would see when we came to a manual polling station is a voter standing outside. And that voter would be checking their name off the voter list. And normally we post the voter list outside of a polling station so people can confirm they're in the right location. Also best practice, international best practice, is to post the voter list online so that people can check it from home. And we do recommend that as well. So first he'll check his name, make sure, confirm his name is on the list. Oh, he's got it there. And then he'll enter the polling station. And as we go into the polling station, the first person he meets is the ID officer. And he will tell the ID officer his name and address. Hi, I'm Nathaniel Gantz. And hand over his ID. And the ID officer will check to confirm the individual is, is correct. And then check on the list and mark their name off the polling list. As Nathaniel Gantz. So she announces the, his name loudly so that the poll watchers standing behind can hear the name and can confirm that and see what's going on. Uh, we should have poll watchers in every polling station. They're an essential part of the transparency of an election process. And they should be able to see everything that goes on in the room and confirm that, except for see the voter mark their ballot. So after his name's checked off the list, then he'll go to the ballot issue officer and she'll give him a ballot and instruct him what to do. Mr. Gant, this is your ballot. When you're done marking your ballot, you'll then take it over to the ballot box and, and you'll fold it and insert it into the ballot box. Okay, so the voter goes to a voting screen. We don't have one here, but one would be set up and they mark their ballot in secret with no one, uh, no one being able to watch that. So as you can see, he's marking his ballot. Then when he finishes that, he'll fold the ballot and drop it in the ballot box. You might notice that our ballot box is a cardboard box. And one of the interesting things about manual elections is it doesn't really matter if it's a cardboard box. So he'll place his ballot in the box and then he leaves the station. Why is this a credible process? Well, the observers that are here, they were here in the morning and they saw the, the polling station chief open that ballot box and show that there's no ballots inside of it. So everyone in the room here has seen there's no ballots in there. And then the observers will, will watch that process all day long and confirm that people are issued ballots, their IDs are checked, and they mark the ballots and put it in the box. And then at the end of the day, they'll see the box is opened and the ballots counted. So th this is one style of a, of of election that I wanted to demonstrate where we have four different races on one ballot. So that, that's a typical sort of way, but I also now I want to show you another way that makes it even simpler to count the ballots. And so we're going to set up quickly for that. So in the, in the previous process I showed you, we had four races on one ballot. But in this process, we use separate ballots for each race. So the voter will come in once again, and announce his name. Hi, I'm Nathaniel Gantz. He'll be checked on the list. 
Nathaniel Gant. And then go to the ballot issue officer and get four separate ballots. Mr. Gant, these are your ballots for the races that are occurring today. You'll take them over to the screen area where you'll cast your vote. You'll fold those ballots and then put them in the appropriate box. And so he'll take his ballots to the screened area and consider each race and then make a mark on, on each ballot for the, his chosen candidate. And then he'll individually fold each ballot in half one time. There may be a staff member standing over here which will help him make sure he puts the ballots in the correct boxes, but the, that individual should not be able to see him mark the ballot. So then when he's done marking his ballots, he'll bring them over and put the orange one in the orange box and the blue one in the blue box, the yellow one in the yellow box, and the green one in the green box. And now he will leave the station. So that's two different styles of manual elections. As you can see, it's very simple. It's very easy to understand, very transparent, and very credible. So next, let's count the ballots. Okay, at the end of the day, once all voters have voted, they'll take the station apart, and the next thing we'll do is we'll count the ballots. So in this case, I'm going to count the ballot that had four races on it, but it works the same for anything. So in front of everyone, I'll take the, the ballot box and open it up, and I'll dump the ballots out on the table. Normally, we'll have a good workspace. Behind us, again, we have election observers. And one of our poll workers will start unfolding the ballots and putting them in a stack. For me, right here. And, and so once we get a few of these ballots, then, then I'll begin counting them. So what I will do in this case, we have four different races. I'm going to uh, read each race, who's on, uh, who got the mark in each race. Uh, she's going to mark it, the, the counting officer is going to mark it on the whiteboard. The observers are behind me. They will be able to see that the name I call out is marked on the ballot, so they'll be able to confirm that, and they'll be able to see her make a, a mark next to the appropriate name on the wall to confirm that process. So, Hunter. Um, sorry, Proud. Smith. Nelson, Banker, Proud, No Mark, and then Ryan Stewart. So the, in this case, we have a ballot with no mark for one race. And so I've said no mark for that one. And the observers are behind me, and they're confirming that. And if they agree, then they will just, you know, we will continue with that. Hunter, Patrick, Donner, Nelson, Banker, Proud, Drew, Frederick, Hunter, Patrick, Lloyd, McCormick, Blackwell, Halls, Gilliam, Harris, Hunter, Proud, Lloyd, McCormick, Banker, Messier, Lloyd, McCormick, Roosevelt, Proud, Lloyd, McCormick, Lincoln, Messier, Gilliam, McCormick. Lincoln, Messier, Drew, McCormick. Banker, Patrick, Smith, and Frederick. So I'm going to stop there, but as you can see that, that uh, I could continue right through this whole stack very quickly and easily. Uh, if we were counting the colored ballots, then I would just be counting one race at a time. And then we would count that entire box, so the blue or the purple or the green. 
and then we would move on to the next race. So either one is fine. As you can see, they can tell exactly what I'm doing the entire time, and they can confirm that the votes on the ballot are um, the votes that we've called out and the votes that are marked. And at the end of this process, at the end of the night, they will have seen the open ballot box in the morning, seen that it's empty. They will have watched voters vote all day from their community. They'll see them identified as they go through the process. They'll see them uh, mark and cast their ballot. And then they'll see the ballot box opened at the end of the day and the votes counted in front of them. And at every point, they can confirm that process. At the end of the night, those, this, this will all be tabulated, added up into a form. And the observers will uh, have a copy of that form. So they'll be able to take that form away and join with other poll watchers from other polling stations and add those together in a process we call a parallel vote tabulation. And then they'll be able to confirm the official count that comes out from the, the division of elections, whatever that is, in your particular state. So this is how a simple manual process works. You can see the count goes pretty quickly. Um, you could go back through the tape and figure out how long it would take you to count a thousand ballots or, or 600 ballots relatively easily. But what my experience has been overseas is that usually we're finished by nine or 10 o'clock and the election is done. Basically, we don't have any of these three weeks of this and recounting that because everyone was able to see that process throughout the entire process and to confirm it. And anyone can do that. It doesn't take an expert, doesn't take a computer person, doesn't take anyone, any voter can confirm that process from start to finish. So that's just a short demonstration. I hope you found that uh, interesting and, and I, I hope you'll help us and advocate for, for an end to machine voting and going back to uh, one day of voting uh, with uh, uh, an open and transparent and credible process, a celebration of democracy for all Americans. Thank you.